What's up, guys? Today I've got a guest. Hi, my name is Emil. Emil has got this incredibly beautiful Ironeth Deepkin army, and he actually took home best in show at the biggest exactly. Swedish tournament. Um, and he's going to show you how he makes his uh, beach oceanside bases, and they just look really good. So, yeah, let's jump let's, into it. Let's do it. To start off, Emily is gluing a part of the Asrite ruin to the base. When the glue has dried, Emily is adding a white pumice. It's sort of a texture paint with acrylic mixed with sand. The pumice will be representing the sand on the base. There is about a hundred different brands that make these texture paints. So you can buy them from Vallejo or from Games Workshop, it doesn't matter. To cover up the texture of the game's workshop base, he's just adding a super thin layer of water texture. And when that is done, we're just priming the whole base black. So let's start painting. The base color for the beach will be Sandry Dust. And the base color for the ass right ruin is Gorthor Brown. Gorthor Brown covers quite poorly, so if you want complete coverage, you just go two laps with the same color. So we're shading the sand with a Seraphim Sepia wash. This is just to give a bit of a punch in the shades in the sand. And the ruins get a wash of Agrax Earthshade. Just make sure that the washes dry properly before you go to the next stage. Time to start dry brushing. We're starting off by dry brushing sandry dust on the sand, and this is to bring back some of the mid tones again. Second layer of dry brush is Dorn Yellow. This color adds some saturation and it also makes the sand look more like a beach rather than a muddy sand. Finally adding a small white highlight. Just add this very carefully and it's totally fine if you have a bit of yellow left in your brush from the previous color. So, back to the ruins. We're adding a Bane Blade Brown as a first highlight. And the color of all colors, Rackart Flesh. And the final highlight, just add a bit of white carefully on all the edges. Make sure you have most of the white wiped off the brush. You want to be really careful with the paint here. With all the dry brushing done, it's time to paint the water. And the base for this is just Stegadon Scale Green. And you just need to put one layer of this and we're done with water for now. The next step is to create the structure of the waves. So what you need for this is some cotton swabs and some Vallejo water texture. Emil has done this using both transparent water and heavy gel and it really doesn't matter which one you use. You just rip tiny pieces from the cotton swabs and place them on a flat surface. Then just take some of the water texture on a brush and start mixing up the cotton with some of the water texture. You can make a couple of these, because it's very easy that some of them end up looking not so good. So make a couple of more than you think you might need. Mm -hmm. 
So when the water texture dried, it's time to place them on the base. Just use an X-Acto knife to remove them cleanly from the flat surface. You don't need any glue to stick this to the base, just use water texture as a foundation and then encapsule everything with another layer of water texture. We're getting closer to adding details to the base, but first this needs to dry about 24 hours. It's time to add some of the details that make this base look amazing. These are some glass beads ordered from eBay. You can find them on some random Chinese website or Amazon as well. These are about one millimeter wide. To adhere these to the base, we just add another layer of water texture and then just place these carefully. We want some of the droplets to look like they're flying away from the wave. To do this we need to cut small pieces of fishing line. And just placing these while the water texture is still wet. And remember we're not using any glue. Everything here is being placed by using the water texture. and the beads are being placed with a moist brush. One thing to consider here, and Emil pointed this out very clearly, is don't add too many of these beads. Less is truly more in this case, because the small beads really pop when it's just a few of them. And to finish everything off we need to encapsulate the drops on the fishing lines and to do that we're adding just a tiny drop of the still water from Aleo. So, it's been about 24 hours and the base is finally done. And Emil did a whole army using these techniques and some of them of course have more advanced arrangements and bigger waves, but you can really go nuts here and just experiment and try to find your style with this base. As usual, I really hope you enjoyed this and learned something from it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for updates every week. Also, I think every one of you should leave a comment down below and just tell Emil how much you really appreciate him doing all of this and showing you how to make these epic looking Ignaz Deepkin bases. Have a great day everyone and I'll see you next time.